Hello and welcome to the video. This is finally my review of this thing here. This is the Mars plane. Now I have had this for quite a while. In fact, I did a full INA for Beginners series on it. INA for Beginners 2022, if I can even say it. And it's now been flown and I've flown it enough that I feel I can make a considered review. Now one of the things I mentioned about this Mars plane when I got it in was how horrendous the manual was so bad I'm even using air quotes and I thought it would be useful before I get into it to kind of let you know how I found the best setup stuff needs to be. People behind the Mars plane, if you're watching this, please, please, please make some effort with the manual. You've obviously made an awful lot of effort with the model. It's a beautiful model and it flies really well, as you've probably seen if you already watched the series. But not giving us the basic information means that you're potentially going to destroy the thing first time out at the field. So here are the specs. So first of all is that the center of gravity appears to be in more or less the right place. So I would put it on the CG marks for your initial flight. If you push it forward a little bit, three or four millimeters front of that, it'll calm it down a little bit. But to be honest, the CG marks are pretty much where they need to be. The center of gravity is particularly tricky to get into as well. I've got a 400 gram battery in the nose as well as the DJI air unit right there at the front and with that it's offsetting the weight of the large motor and folding prop I used here without too much trouble at all. I've even got a little bit more room to slide the battery forward. If you want to keep it lightweight my all-up weight here for flying was just over one and a half kilograms which is a reasonably heavy model for the kind of stuff I fly here. If you want to keep it lighter by using a lighter battery you're probably going to struggle to do that you're going to have to put the battery right up to the front of the nose in order to try and balance that out it's difficult to build this as a lightweight version unless you go for a very small motor aileron throws i would recommend you go for a minimum of about 15 millimeters up to about 18 or even 21 millimeters if you want it quite acrobatic in the rolls i'm flying mine with 15 millimeters and the rolls are quite lazy but that's the way that i want to fly this one if i wanted to increase that i'd probably kick up the throws another three maybe four millimeters just to give me a little more bite on that air in terms of the v-tail i would say eight to ten millimeters for both the elevator and also the rudder elements is about where you want to be at, at 10 millimeters elevator throw you can get some very crisp pitch responses uh, so i wouldn't go too much further than that unless you're really looking for tight aerobatics and rolls in terms of the endurance out of the 4000 milliamp hour pack that I've got in here, it's about 20, 22 minutes is about as much as you want to push it. Now that's not bad for a model like this using a larger battery, one of the big 7000 milliamp hour batteries that things like the lithium ion is going to give you an awful lot more flight time. Uh, cruising is running at about 40 miles an hour, pulling at about 10 amps. So you can definitely get some decent flight time out of this with the right battery. Noise levels are very good. It isn't as loud as we expected. Unfortunately, I haven't really got any recordings of it. Every time we seem to fly it, it's nice and windy. But with that larger prop spinning a little bit slower, that efficiency also means that there's not a high noise, not the screaming that you get off things like Drax and some of the other models that I've tried. I was worried that the prop was a little bit close into the back, but that's not an issue at all. Only two last things to comment on, really. Uh, first is that there are loads of static thrust, so don't worry about the launches. Uh, the launches are very easy to set up. I'm using iNav Auto Launch here, and it just soars into the sky with that 10 by 7 inch prop that it came supplied with. And the last thing is, don't expect this to float. Um, stall speeds, you're kind of getting at kind of 18 miles an hour is about as close as I've dared to do it. Um, rather with things like the Dolphin, where it would go much lower, 12 miles an hour in some cases uh, because that's so much lighter the weight here even with the large wings does mean that about 18 miles an hour is right on the edge any less than that and if you do a turn you're just going to get a, a tip stall and in fact that's what happened to me when I was coming in for my very first landing on the maiden if you saw that so my big tip is always come in under power 
So with all of those tips, let me run through the ratings for this particular model. Now this is an updated version, thank you to all my Patreons who helped me develop this, that kind of explains how everything works. There is a bit of science behind this to try and make this easier to compare all the different models that I review, rather than them all being brilliant, because actually, you know what, they're not all brilliant, they're better at certain things than others. First thing to talk about then is the speed envelope. How fast and how slow can it fly? Again, because it's reasonably large and heavy, it doesn't get a huge rating on this. I reckon that 20 miles an hour is probably as slow as I dare to push it. And that gives me a little bit of latitude so I can start a turn without having a wing stall out on me. Uh, it's got a reasonably thick cord on the wing. It's not racing aerofoils by any stretch of the imagination. So again, with the size of it, and the power that's more chosen, I think, for a nice amount of static thrust for the launches, you're not going to get super duper high speeds as well. This is your kind of 70 to 80 mile an hour range rather than 100 mile an hour plus. You probably could get there, but you'd have to go and think about different motors, props, and also batteries too. Efficiency gets a nice three star rating. It will fly for over 20 minutes at a time on a pretty regular standard 4000 milliamp hour battery. If you use lithium ion, a good lithium ion pack, you could extend that an awful lot more. But on a 4000 milliamp hour 4S LiPo, pretty standard, you'll get 22 minutes, which isn't bad at all. In terms of the noise it makes, as I've already mentioned, the noise is actually really good. It's very, very quiet in operation. There's no screaming like you get with some models. So most people, unless they're quite close to it, will probably not even hear it if you're flying at any altitude. So this one gets a really good four stars. You can definitely hear it when it's closer in, but as soon as you get a couple of hundred meters away, you're kind of struggling to hear it at all, particularly if there's any wind or breeze about. Toughness, it gets a good rating for. It will survive almost all crashes without any real damage. The only thing I would advise is if you are making the nose cone like I did here, I would use something like an epoxy resin or Yoohoo pour or something like that. I use one of the other glues. I actually use the Gorilla Glue Clear that I've used on other things. And in the event of a knock, it will separate the two halves of the shell. So I would use something like that because that tends to take a lot of the knocks. The only other things that have had happen is the balsa wood on the ends of the wings can be pulled away because that with the screw at the rear is the only way that the wings are actually held in place. So that is put under a lot of stress if you do catch the wing in a crash. Now this is a very stable model that's able to execute basic rolls and loops with the kind of settings that we've already talked about. So this gets a three star rating. It isn't an acrobatic plane, but it also, if you kind of increase the throws, it is more than capable. It's more of a kind of stable explorer flyer that can get a little bit wild and loose if you really crank up those throws. It's not designed for that, but it will do it. In terms of the room inside, there is a lot of room inside here. There's room inside for a flight controller and other pieces with room to spare for all of the cables. The only reason that it doesn't get a full mark on this is because things like provision for the DJI HD system hasn't really been thought about and I had to figure out my own solution for that and design and print some 3D parts. That should have been all included in a modern wing like this where so many pilots are using different FPV systems. And the last one, this is actually a pretty good mark for such a big plane. Believe it or not, this actually fits in the boot of my little car and it gets a nice four stars because it breaks down into smaller parts with some basic tools. Now, unfortunately, it only does that because I created my own little thumb screws for the wings and it also does that because I've made some extension cables that connect into the servos that go into the wings. In my humble opinion, there should have been a connector that's obviously been designed to be there on the root of the wing that make all that stuff happen and that would have been a lot easier. So overall... This isn't a bad set of scores. So in conclusion, what do I think? Has it knocked my favorite dolphin off my number one position? No, it's not. Unfortunately, at the moment, they are exceptionally expensive. And for the kind of money that people are asking for, the over $250 and more, you know what? It just isn't worth it. Go and buy yourself a dolphin. But 
I've heard of people snagging these on AliExpress and other places earlier on before things got crazy for kind of $140. This is a fantastic piece of kit for $140. It doesn't fly as slow as the Dolphin. It doesn't, it's about the same speed. Um, it's about the same flying characteristics. It's got about the same amount of room inside, although it's significantly bigger. There's much more presence in the air. So hopefully that helps those of you that are interested in this. Overall, really good. Double thumbs up from me. This is a fantastic FPV flyer, but it's only really good if you're getting it for kind of $140, $160 maximum. Any more than that, there are better things about for the money. Thank you for spending your time today watching that video. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you're trying to learn about a subject, then check out the playlist. All of my videos are organized into easy to follow playlists that if you're trying to learn a topic, will take you from the basics right the way through to some pretty advanced stuff.